So here's the item frame and it goes up to eight different redstone levels. So the way it communicates with a comparator is by having a variable resistance depending on where it is, therefore creating a different voltage potential. And so item frames mimic these potentiometers that as you rotate them can create a different voltage potential. The way these potentiometers work is that there's a carbon or graphite base and this wiper blade. And so wherever the center of this wiper touches will increase or decrease the resistance. To demonstrate this principle, I have a lightly coated, more coated, and a heavily coated carbon base. On the left, the graphite was just drawn on, but these two were actually smeared on. And so that was done just by collecting graphite shavings and smearing them on the paper. This allowed more graphite to be accumulated on the paper than just simply drawing it on. Starting with the lightly coated, you can see it's around 7.5 mega ohms of resistance. But as I move these leads closer to each other, you can see the resistance begin to drop. Now for the center coated, you can see it's a lot less. And now for the heavily coated, it dropped down to around 200,000 ohms. And again, moving closer, the resistance drops again. The resistance depends on the thickness of the carbon base. So all these potentiometers may be the same size, but the carbon base may be thicker or thinner depending on what resistance value is needed. Whenever you use the middle and one of the other two pins, you create a variable resistor called a rheostat, and this allows you to change the current continuously. The item frame I created acts like a rheostat, except it's not continuous since there's a couple of gaps. In order to fix the problem, you need to minimize the gaps between these pads, allowing the center pad to be connected to one as it's switching over to the next. And so it would smoothly disengage from the previous to the next. There wouldn't be a problem since the current will run through the least resistance. And so if two of them are connected, it will choose the path with the least resistance. There is space to make this into a potentiometer by adding another resistor here that goes to another pin that gets connected out to ground through here. So you have power and a ground. It's recommend to use a higher resistance such as like 10,000. But by changing this pull down, you would have to multiply each of these resistors by 10 in order to create the same reference voltage. And by doing that, you get a reference voltage depending on which pad is connected. The reason I created it in a real stack configuration is because there's already the other resistor connected to the microcontroller, which means I only need to add a resistance to the comparator in order to get a signal. Before I talk about the resistant values I used, I initially thought that the item frame is two redstone dust per tick, but it's actually just one redstone dust per tick. And so these theoretical values assumes that one tick is equal to redstone dust. The real theoretical values are here. In order to fix it, I used a 432 ohm potentiometer and that worked in reducing down one tick to one redstone value. So initially the voltage goes through a 432 ohm potentiometer, then 84 ohms is added, 110, 133 after that, 161 ohms is added, then 210, then 255, and finally 165 ohms. And so the total resistance would be 1,119 plus the initial 432, leaving the total to 1,551 ohms. So on the back side of the selector, there's a little pad. It's able to bridge this voltage to the microcontroller in the comparator. And in this block here is the potentiometer I used in order to correct the values. And so the left lead is hooked up to power and the middle lead goes straight into the item frame. Finally, the middle is connected here in this black wire and goes back to the microcontroller in the comparator. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, as always, please let me know. Thank you for watching.